I'm also going to read you some tweets. I haven't seen Jane, she's not arrived yet. I know. Is it Jane Lambert? I'm going to read some tweets that came in the past few weeks from migrants and supporters of migrants. A very, very short tweet. <laughs> okay, the first one is from Magda. She said, I'm a nurse and now with patients say they don't want to be seen by a foreigner. It never happened before. And now I introduce you to Manuel Cortez, who is the sec General Secretary of TSSA. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. First of all, can I thank the organizers of this rally for inviting me to speak and all of you for coming along today. I'm absolutely proud that our union, our union supports your campaign. You know, I want to bring to you a very strong message of solidarity and support from our members across Britain and Ireland. We understand that it's not migrants who lower wages. It's greedy and scrupulous bosses who are to blame. We understand, we understand that a country is far, far better because we have migrants over here. We understand that if it wasn't for all of you, we wouldn't be able to deliver the social and health care that we have in our country. It's the Tories and their austerity which are destroying our NHS, not migrants. And we, we understand that as working people, we have far more in common with each other than we have with bosses. And that's why I am proud to be here today, standing shoulder to shoulder with you. And you know, it's ironic, isn't it? The Daily Mail and their hate of migrants. They've been running this vile campaign for years, saying that you, you are responsible for lower wages. Well, you know what's happened over the last couple of days? The people who clean their offices, predominantly migrants, are actually turning on the culprits of the low wages, the owners of the Daily Mail, because they're going to be going on strike, on strike for higher wages. Yay! And that's what we need. We need more action. Getting people together to campaign for migrant rights, but also for workers' rights. Because you know, I am proud to be the son of a migrant. I'm also proud to be a migrant myself. When my dad emigrated to Gibraltar from Spain in the 1960s, Spain was a dictatorship. He came over to Gibraltar because there was a better life awaiting for him and there were jobs to be done and they needed his labor. Yet, he wasn't treated very well upon arrival. And it was a struggle, a struggle for him, even though he married a local woman to get any kind of permanent residence in Gibraltar. I'll never forget that. Growing up, growing up, not knowing what the status of my, of my dad was from one day to the next. And you have to be a warped, cruel individual to be playing, to be playing with the lives of people in this country, like the Tories have been doing over the last few years since that Brexit referendum. I say to them, we are drawing a line in the sun. No more will you take advantage of working people. We are uniting, irrespective of national background, color, creed, sexual orientation, or any other barrier that you want to put in front of us to divide us. We are about coming together to create a better world, and that means a world without borders. Thank you very much. Yay! Uh, I've got another tweet for you. It's about nurses. Somebody tweeted, nurses are amazing people. Their care, compassion, hard work saves life. I learned that many work 12 hours shift and many work extra shift because they're understaffing. 
a learn also that well over 50 percent of the wonderful nursing staff here are, are eu nationals from spain portugal poland many others are from outside the eu philippines india etc all the ones i met were very dedicated caring people with full english skills and now i introduce you the next speaker is actually working for the nhs uh, she's a gp her name is jackie appleby Thank you everybody and thank you all for coming. My name is Jackie Appleby, I'm a GP in Tower Hamlets. I also volunteer with Freedom From Torture and with Doctors of the World UK. So I know an awful lot about how important it is that migrants, we have them working in the NHS. And in fact, the NHS would collapse if we didn't have migrant workers. We have we look at what's happening to the NHS, we look around us, we see in the news, we see that ambulances are queuing outside A&E departments because there aren't enough um, spaces in the A&E departments. We see that people are being cared for in corridors because there aren't enough beds. We see that you can't get an appointment with your GP and the government would have us believe that that is the fault of migrants. This is absolutely a lie. It's absolute rubbish. The NHS would collapse without migrants. One in eight NHS workers is a migrant. And I'm not just talking about from the EU, I'm talking about across the world. Our borders need to be open to migrants from across the world. 10% of doctors are migrants, 7% of nurses are migrants. We need all of you, we need all of you to work here to help the workforce crisis. Since this government have abolished the nurse bursary, 30,000 nurses have left nursing. Nursing places, applications for nursing to train to be a nurse are right down. Applications to train to be doctors are right down. We need migrants for the workforce crisis but this government hypocritically has told a doctor that they can't come and work here because their salary won't be enough there's a cap for a salary of £55,000 apparently which is quite a lot of money isn't it I'm sure lots of people here would like to be earning that sort of money but the government don't want people here unless they're earning £55,000 so they're turning people away Damn. So, in real terms funding, we're a, we're a rich country. Our NHS is being systematically underfunded. Don't, you, don't let the government tell you otherwise. We're used to having a 4% increase in funding for the NHS every year. Under the Tories, it's been barely 1%, which doesn't keep pace with increasing demand and with inflation. We're a rich country. We've recently been told that the, the gap between rich and poor is getting even greater, and a very, very few people can um, have most of the wealth in this country. There's also the myth that um, we need to charge migrants for health care because the NHS can't afford to pay for all these people, which again is rubbish. The evidence is that if we charge migrants for health care, it won't save the NHS money, it will cost the NHS money. Because people will not go to seek health care when they need it, they'll wait until there's an emergency or they'll wait until their infectious disease has been passed on to everybody else, for example, TB and so on. So it's absolute rubbish to say that we'll save money. It's all about charging, it's all about scapegoating, and it's all about bringing in charges for the rest of us as well. So don't believe a word of it. So, welcome. Thank you for working in my NHS. It's our NHS. It's the 70th birthday of the NHS this year. So we must unite and fight for our NHS. We must fight for migrants' rights. We must fight for a better world for all of us. And we can start by joining this demonstration on the 17th of March, which is stand up to, stand up to racism. Thank you for having me, and thank you for coming. Okay. Thank you, Jessica.